The Speaker, in subject to standing order 213, the Chairman of Committee, may, in his discretion, disallow any motion or amendment that is the same in substance, although the motion of a no confidence name a different alternative Prime Minister. Its main purpose or question is the same substance. For this, the above reason, it will not be placed on a notice paper. We as the King's, uh, His Majesty's royal opposition over here, I am loyal, we have an entitlement to raise a point of order. And you ought to listen to us. We have that right. What's your point of order? Go ahead. So the point of order is this. Number of points. Number one, this is a constitutional motion. Number one, keep that in mind. Number two, there are restrictions on what matters the PBC can consider and not consider. Your jurisdiction as the PBC under Standing Order 22 is confined to just two limited areas. Number one is you have to consider whether it's parochial, and number two, you have to consider whether it's in the national interest. So you cannot rely on section 165 of the standing order to say it's the same motion in substance or material form. You can't say that. It names a completely different alternative prime minister. It makes it substantially different. Thank you. I must inform the parliament in regards to a notice of motion of no confidence in the Prime Minister, Honorable James Marape, member for Tariq Pori Open, that was delivered to me today on the 27th November 2024 at 9.40 a.m. In a dramatic turn of events, the Speaker of the Papua New Guinea Parliament has once again announced the blockade of a vote of no confidence against Prime Minister James Marape. The Private Business Committee, through the Speaker, cited Standing Order 165, which prevents repeated motions of the same substance within a 12-month period. This decision has sparked outrage from the opposition, particularly from Karenga Kwa, the member for Sina Sina Yongamug, who is now questioning the rules and processes, hinting at a potential court battle. For our PNG Trends Burner viewers, it's important to note that the last vote of no confidence court battle was dismissed due to a procedural error, not the actual substance of the motion. This means that while government lawyers may have won the case, the court has yet to test the legality of the private business committee's decisions regarding signatures, MPs' names and issues raised by the opposition. The case was cut short due to a procedural matter. So what exactly happened in the latest attempt to lodge a vote of no confidence motion during the November 2nd Parliament sitting? Recent vote. A similar vote of no confidence was held on the 12th of September 2024 and was defeated. According to the rules, you can't have the same vote within 12 months unless the first decision is overturned. Parliament Rules, Section 111, Subsection 1 of the Constitution allows any member to introduce a motion. However, Standing Order 165 restricts repeated motions of the same substance within 12 months. Same substance. Although the new motion named a different person for Prime Minister, the alternative Prime Minister nominated is Grand Chief Sir Peter Ipatis. It was still seen as the same because it targeted the current Prime Minister, James Marape. Since the last vote was only two months ago, the new motion couldn't be put on the notice paper. The opposition strongly disagrees, arguing that the committee overstepped its authority. They believe the private business committee should only determine if a motion is of local or national interest, not make legal decisions. We have the right to challenge any decisions, and this one should have been allowed because it named a different person as prime minister, said an opposition member. The opposition has hinted at taking the issue to court to challenge the committee's decision. Meanwhile, the Minister for Justice has introduced a new law to prevent repeated votes of no confidence for 18 months after an unsuccessful vote, aiming to improve political stability. This was answered by Parliament with a majority vote of 75 against 32 for it on the 12th September 2024, during the previous 
12 months. For this, the above reason, it will not be placed on a notice paper. Thank you. Honorable Member for Senior Senator, what's your point of order? Yes, my point of order is the continuous perversion of the processes of this parliament by the so-called uh, private business committee. Now, earlier this morning, in support of uh, various debates, we honorable, said... Honorable uh, Member for Senior Senator Yangumul, I would ask you to withdraw this statement by saying the so-called uh, business parliament, this committee is not privately being appointed, uh, uh, put up by the speaker. It's something that standing order have allowed for. No, I was referring to the private business committee. Are we talking about the proceedings of the private business committee? If, if so, I'm trying to explain, explain the opposition's response to the ruling through this point of order. Honorable member, if you want to do an explanation and ask for that, I will not allow for it. It's a point of order. It's a point of order. If you want it's a to point see of a point order. of order, I'm only delivering what the committee have decided for. Well, we're entitled to raise a point of order to any pronouncements you make from the chair. Whether it is in order or not in order, we have an entitlement. Whether it is a pronouncement of the government or any committee of the parliament, we as the king's, uh, his majesty's royal opposition over here, I am loyal, we have an entitlement to raise a point of order. And you ought to listen to us. We have that right. What's the point of order? Go ahead. So the point of order is this. Number of points. Number one, this is a constitutional motion. Number one, keep that in mind. Number two, there are restrictions on what matters the PBC can consider and not consider. Your jurisdiction as the PBC under Standing Order 22 is confined to just two limited areas. Number one is you have to consider whether it's parochial, and number two, you have to consider whether it's in the national interest. You can't consider any legal provisions outside of the requirements of Standing Order 22. You cannot even rely on the other provisions of the Standing Orders. So here, your ruling is very clear. You are not saying this matter is parochial, therefore is rejected. You haven't said that. You're relying on section uh, standing order 165, which you cannot, to say that it's the same substantive motion. So I will uh, have, uh, the committee has decided to reject it. That is wrong. You can't even go to standing order 165. You are confined to standing order 22. Now, the only basis on which you can reject it, or the PBC can, is to tell this parliament that it's parochial. You have not used that word. You've gone well outside that jurisdiction, or the committee has. And that is wrong. We've been saying the, we are a country of laws. We, we said it this morning. So we must stick to the laws. And the law says, if it is not parochial, then you've got to allow it to go through. And you can't raise a point of order upon a point of order. Honorable, uh, honorable member for Senator Young Group, I, by today, deliver to you the decision of the committee. And I'm registering myself I would, because I will rely upon it in court if I have to go to I've court. I've seen your point of order is being so raised I'm like recording my debating. Objection. My committee's point of order here so that we can say when we go to court, the court will not tell us you've waived your right or you have been stopped by your silence from raising it in the chamber, therefore you cannot raise it in court. So I'm registering here to pave the way for me to raise it in court. You have to understand that. So you've got to allow me to complete my point of order. And the final point is this. 165, standing order 165. Honorable Governor, we still have the member raising his point of order, so I'll allow him to... Standing order 165. The, the Honourable Member have already made himself clear that he want to use this to place to himself what he want to place on record in Parliament, so I'll Correct. allow him to raise that. But the decision of the committee I've already announced. Correct. Thank, Thank you, you uh, Deputy. So, uh, Section 165 talks about the rejection of motions that are of, of the same substance in form. 
This motion is not the same motion in substance. It names a completely different alternative prime minister. So you cannot rely on section 165 of the standing order to say it's the same motion in substance or material form. You can't say that. It names a completely different alternative prime minister. So you've taken the other side of the coin to say it has not named uh, a different prime minister. The prime minister is still the current prime minister, but that's one side of the coin. The other side of the coin, which varies by virtue of the character of the motion, is that you have a new alternative. So that makes it substantially different. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Member, for suggesting on your uh, point of order. Your point of order is noted. Uh, the decision I've delivered is the decision of the committee, which I would not deliberate anymore on this. So we'll move on to the order of this day.